Yo, 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 what's up? Welcome back, enjoyers of the old Scales and Counters. We are back. I haven't played in like, I don't know, two weeks or something. I've been sick a little bit, caught a little bit of a flu. No, no COVID, thankfully, but just spent the last five days in bed, basically. But now we're back and we have new modern. They banned Fury. Finally, I was actually not too mad about Fury, but many other people were. And they went Beanstalk, which I friggin' hated. So, we don't have that anymore in the format. Let's take a look if there's already some numbers. But at least we don't have to play against Solitude, draw two cards, Leyland Binding, draw two cards anymore. Seven days, they did it on Monday, which is now three days ago. If you're watching this on YouTube, it's probably gonna not be Thursday anymore. By the way, to any YouTube watchers, I'm glad you are watching my stuff and if you haven't yet, uh, like the video and subscribe. Thanks a lot for the support, everybody. Anyway, in the last seven days, which is like half of the time with new modern and half of the time with old modern, there's already a drop in scam numbers. And Cascade Beanstalk obviously is dead because Beanstalk is banned. So the meta game is probably wide open and we're gonna just jam some scales and see what happens. I think I'll play this list from the last time. We have 24 lands, which is obviously a lot of mana, but we have two echoing deeps and, and forwards the sagas. And the deck can be kinda mana hungry. I'll still play a Shattered Spire, many gamers drop this card, but I think it's it's sick. If the game if the game goes long, it's always awesome to just add two counters or even three if you have the Ozolith. With the 20 creatures package, no random sideboard shenanigans in the main deck. I don't even play a Shadow Spear, just all engine, all scales in the main deck. Sideboard, we can do whatever we want basically, because again, I think the meta game is probably wide open now. There is one change I want to make. I'll drop these Void Mirrors in favor of the um, trailer. Because, for one, I liked the Void Mirrors against Cascade because it's good against free, um, like, casting stuff for zero mana with Evoke. And also against Cascade. But, well, that Cascade deck, this, the Beanstalk deck doesn't exist anymore. And Solus Trailer is good against Cascade too because you cast your Cascade spell from Exile, which this shuts down. However, the big upside is... This is just static ability that says you can't do the thing instead of being a triggered ability. Which is better against the new hotness Tishana's Tightbinder. Because that can counter an, a triggered ability and then shut down your hate piece. And Solis Jailer just doesn't care about that at all. They just can't do the thing and it's not a trigger. It is also sort of good against burn sometimes to shut down well, their attackers and, and the suspend card. And besides that, I think this is a good swap to make now in the new meta game. Anything else we'll figure out as we go. So let's jump into a league with this list and see. I'm super excited because I, I really hated up the beanstalk as a card. And that's gone now. So let's see what's going on in these leagues. Probably going to be a pretty cool new meta of people trying out stuff, you know. Somebody already has 13 trophies. Chris MTG, don't know them. Oh, mistaken, the homie who sometimes champs scales has 10 trophies. That's kind of sick. They usually play amulet. Um, so let's export the deck list and put it on as a overlay for the stream. And to the YouTube watchers, I will see you in round one, which will happen now, okay, we have our first match against Chukioni. And we get to be on the play, that is awesome. What do we got? Hardened scales, but no green mana. Do we mulligan this? If we keep it, it's sort of a slow multi six that plays scales eventually. Go patchwork into patchwork. I'll try it. Obviously, it would be super sick with, with green source turn one. Without it, it's kind of lame, but it's also not the worst hand ever. It's good in grindy matchups. 
where we can curve into its saga. So next is go, see what happens. A spire bluff canal. Always a good choice, really. Mengu said that the power level of Merc Tidies has dropped in his latest video, or whatever that's worth, but it's still a solid deck. If they have turn one, they don't seem to have Chandler turn one, they would have played it before Bobble. Always a lot less scary, of course. Okay, we draw Ravager, that's always good to have. I'll play my non what's the Saga land and the patchwork. This hand would be pretty would go pretty hard with um oh do they have a counter cut? This hand would go pretty hard if we had the scales out, but it can still do a lot of stuff. Okay. If they dash a rag event, I'm just gonna block it. Cause I have lots of stuff coming anyway, so I like waking trades with the stack. They now find Chandler. That is a scary card. It's just the, the surveilling is so good for this deck, and then it becomes a three power flyer. So if I find a ballista, I will kill this if they don't have delirium. I always do that now. Even if it's a bad trade in mana counter spell, surveilled to the graveyard. Interesting. I mean, on the draw, counter spell is not that great, but my draw is slow, so does that tell me anything? Maybe they are, they don't have more lands in hand or something like that. Two to the top, though, with Preordain is a little bit scary. That green source would be sick now to be TBH. Well, that's the opposite of a green source. For now, I guess we cast Patchwork and Pass again, attack for two, then pass, I guess. Imagine if we drew forest here, that would have been sick, or any of the other green sources. Now we're just gonna draw the copper land gorge and it's gonna look terrible. You know, the land that comes into play tapped when you have four or more lands, with, including that one. Shattered Spire, we can, in a pinch, cycle, if we really need to. Opponent scry 2 to the top, so they're probably gonna play a fetch land here and uh, get a 3-3 three, three fly on, but at least it's already turn 3. Alright, Polluted Delta, called that one. Island, Ledger Shredder, well, people play that again. That card has fallen out of favor hard when the Orkish Bowman came out because that punishes looting a lot, pretty hard. Okay, opponent taps out, which is great. We get to resolve more stuff. If we find a land, we can do a lot of things. Like blue gets pretty strong counter magic against Harden Scales lately. With Stern Scolding, which counters any creature spell with power or toughness 2 or less, which is all our creatures for one blue mana. The opponent doesn't seem to have that. Spell Pierce also counters all our non creatures, obviously, or. What's something I'm missing? Um, not sure, probably some sideboard cards like Anul. Counters also everything we can cast. One blue mana. Alright, green source or something. But at least uh, there it is. A little bit late though. I mean, we could go aggro and cast a, a zero drop if we really, really wanted to. So we can attack into their shredder. Actually, that would make it them able to make it a 3 5. Let's cast Ravager, I attack with both and threaten to do some Ravagering. I'm actually not in a great spot since we didn't find any land. Every time I play like 24 lands, that's gonna happen to me. I 
mean, we could make a dude. Do people play? Uh, what's the card? Dang it! Creatures lose all abilities. Main deck these days. What is it called? I'm so bad with card names. I think we want to cast stuff. Just play the Ravager and if Ink Moth mana up if they destroy something. Can attack with this and threaten to trade Ravager for the Shredder if they they probably don't want that. Like the flyers are pretty good against us. Oh, okay. I think I'm gonna sack the Ravager to kill the Shredder because we have pressure and they don't. Uh, taking away any of the aerial pressure is good. Yeah. Yo, what's up, Ian? How you doing? Welcome to the scaling. Okay. I mean, it makes sense. They give up Shredder if they have another panel, of course. Kind of scary. Alright, now we get Ozolith. So we really don't have any lands, huh? But we can get a drum here, and we kinda have to. And it probably has counter magic now. Counter magic, six flying power, that's what. Um, Shana's tight binder, okay. So we don't get anything. Uh, can't really respond to that, that just happens. At least we, we still have a floating mana. But it's painful because we never draw any lands and lose this one too. <laughs> it would be worse to if that happened to the ETB or the first chapter. Anyway, Ozolith is kind of sick with these patchworks and now we're sort of racing here a little bit. I'm just thinking which of the two X cards I want to cast here. Probably the Walker, because once we have some stuff on Ozolith, casting Ballista is sick. Even though they could have counter magic, but kind of doesn't look like it. We could have also played for zero here. In that case, maybe we wanted to cast the Ballista and the Walker for zero, but we still have a little bit of time here. Okay, we have 10 power, so we do attack, obviously. This blocks that, technically. And I don't think playing Ballista for zero is the best idea. I mean, if they double block this, we only kill one thing. But with the Ozolith out, that is still a good trade for us, I would say. Okay, jump block mode. Sounds good to me. But... You're probably dead in two turns, they just need a lightning bolt or something. Merktide is also pretty strong. Expressive iteration. Well, now we just want to find like Ravager or something. Now, if we flood the board with uh, Thopters, we might just win that way. Because there's no fury anymore. So making a lot of Thopters is even better than before. That kind of rhymed, so that's good. Opponents iterating not even that expressively, honestly. Misha's Bobble has entered the exile zone. Mm. 
And Doom is my Ravager, but like they can just cast any of their burn spells on it anyway. So I kinda like trading it for a flyer. Even though the shredder also just grows, you know. Alright, what do we got? This is insane. Zero lands ever and I guess we just cast a ballista. We are dead to what? I mean ballista casting ballista means we have lethal, so they gotta do something. And we're dead to lightning bolt if they survive. But the casting ballista means this is 12 damage, so either the ballista ping or the walker kills them. And I don't know what they can have for two blue. Let's see. Not really like we have any choice. I've been watching your videos and been getting into scales lately. Yo, welcome to the stream. Um, I think your opponent's dead now. Welcome Lattice Cup. Uh, I'm glad you liked my videos and made it to the stream too. I've been on a break, been sick this week, but now we're finally back. New modern, new and exciting. Opponent is straight up dead, aren't they? To the board. This is 12, this is 13 damage. Crazy. Like, our draw was, was so bad and we got punished and... I don't think they can do anything. <laughs> nice one. I bought a shell for it in paper, but unfortunately Saga Sink Moths and Cauldrons are expensive LMAO. Yeah, I've been playing this deck in paper for ages. Ever, ever since when um, Moxopal was still legal, so I have most of those cards. And the sagas I got when they came out in the cauldrons. I have two cauldrons in paper. My store just never, never really has any. <laughs> but I'm gonna get a third one eventually. Uh, that was good. The patchworks were actually sick. I think they're not. They're like fine, but ground pressure, especially now on the draw, isn't the best. So I might take some of them out here. Oh, and uh, put that here. The K ones comes in over probably an echoing deeps. Because we never need all of the value in, in this matchup. Relic's good. Take away Delirium and the ability to cast Murktide. Safekeeping can be fine. This member is like not amazing. Trailer claim. Yeah, we don't want to boil a lot anyway. We can take out maybe um, two patchworks and stirrings or something. It's possible I always underrate the patchworks, but on the draw it's like... Is Cauldron good? Maybe we don't want all three on the draw to like... Maybe a patchwork still better than casting a Cauldron on turn two. Even though the card's kind of sick. Okay, let's try it this way. Could also take out another stirrings. Do we need any artifact removal? If they can have needle. We can also play needle just for engineered explosives, but I don't really love that. Like if they don't draw it, the needle is like a dead card. And we can beat it too. Um Yeah, let's play it this way. I like how the opponent confidently countered our card and then he was just dead on board. The hanger big walker with one power is what did it. Yeah, that's a good hand. Hopefully they don't just start countering everything. But being on the draw is always scary when they play turn one channeler. Regavan is also like, okay, power means no channeler probably. Reggae Vans annoying, but not like game over. What are they gonna? It's like, okay, well. Wanna never has any one drops turn one, but they could have spell pierce, of course. Still gonna jam the scales. Because we came here to do scales things. Why did I get priority after casting it? In response, Steam Vans tapped. You, you have to fetch in response to scare your opponent. You can't just go to end step and fetch. This is pro strats. It's mind games. I, but I see right through you, opponent. Chukioni. 
Badger Shredder kinda makes me wish I had a um, dismember, but I think he's beatable. I am going to double spell here probably though. Yeah. So you do get your your loot opponent. I'm I'm just such a such a good guy. But scales plus Ozolith out is such an insane engine that a little Ravager can make your ink mouth lethal sometimes. Basically quadruples all your counters. Let's quick math with Krizuan, aka the two-headed giant. Sometimes even a three-headed giant. Alright, we got a 2-2, two -two, opponent's got a 2-4. Who's plus one counter deck now? I, m I imagine they kill this, but with also without, I'll trade with the uh, removal spell any day, really. We're usually good, barring any annoying sideboard options, like... Wow, they discarded the Alpine Moon. Doesn't care about Ink Moth, I guess. Maybe they have an Engineered Explosives, or... That Dress Down, that's the card I was talking about earlier. Dress Down is annoying because when your card is on the stack and they play it, it enters with zero counters, so it's basically a counter spell draw card. Failure, yo, thank you for the follow. So, all that being said, let's cast A Stirrings, take a damage. Uh, Somehow I get priority when casting my card, it makes no sense, but thanks, I guess. Okay, that being said. I think it's Ballista, that card is just insane with Cauldron out, or generally, yeah. Like, we have all the other pieces, basically. Question is, what kind of interaction do we expect here? If they have dress down, casting any creature is obviously not amazing. If they have counter spell, I'd rather get a creature countered than cauldron. So I'm a play the ballista. If it gets countered or dressed down, it's annoying. But in the graveyard, if we get to resolve the cauldron, it still has value. Yes, fat. That's them right. Empty cheat bot. Right now I can have six. See what the opponent does. Get the looting on. Actually, maybe if fixing is not a good idea if this resolves and they have a removal spell, but let's just see what they do. Opponent is mana screwed over there, that's why they discarded the Selpine Moon. Just like us, game one. Did they still not find the land or why is this taking so long? Magic players in general really like playing cards that make you feel smart. You know what I mean? And I mean, I'm obviously no exception playing hardened scales. Magic players love cards most where you... Which are sometimes bad, but but sometimes good, and when they're good, they're so good. Like, say, expressive iteration. You, know, you can't just jam that, you have to have like a land drop available and, and whatnot, and then find your land. And then it just feels amazing, if you do. No, they're not doing anything. Ca cast into the fire discarded, that exiles an artifact. So they are trying to set up an engineered explosive, so whatever. Yo, what's up, Cracky? Yeah, I'm also glad I'm back. I've been sick this week. Mm, bolt on Ballista. I'm gonna take my Ozolith counters. If they also kill that, I guess that's fine, but... Pinging for two doesn't seem a game-winning deal to me. And Ballista in Graveyard, if we resolve Cauldron, is good anyway. So, Saturday till yesterday basically spent in bed. But now I'm, I'm back and feeling better, thankfully.
to this channel, Player2 on YouTube, they make such awesome remixes. So good. All right. Are they gonna cast anything? Nope. Okay. Okay, so Harden Skill is a bait spell. Why do I keep getting priority when I put a spell on the stack? Is it because it takes damage? Maybe. Okay, this resolved kind of quickly. I want to play Walker because because it's kind of sick. When it dies, it gives us value. When it gets countered, I don't care much. Only bad if they have another exile based card. Hopefully, it does not many of those around. Press down still annoying, but I'd rather play Walker into it than Ravager. Preordain Graveyard. Already 4 6. Unholy hits my Zabaz. Alright, fair enough. Red tips yet? Yes. There are two in this list. And Press Down. Press Down is counter my spell and draw a card, so that's really good. Plus, get another. Loot on here. Things getting big. On the bright side, if they have no more interaction and we find a land, Ravager probably just kills them from here. <laughs> I can put four counters on, on Treader, no thanks. <laughs> thanks for asking though. There are two Echoing Deeps in this list. And I've tr played it my last two leagues too, so you can check out the videos on YouTube. It hasn't done much. The good part about the card is that the floor is pretty high, it's just an untapped land. And the ceiling is, is amazingly high, because it can be what's a saga, of course. A ledger shredder. Means we can't just kill them. Well, maybe if we cast Ravager plus Cauldron, okay. Now I just want to find land and Chi Chi. Let us draw land. Then we can go Cauldron, Ravager. Put the Ozolith counters on it. Not GG straight up, but it's pretty sick. Actually, how many counters is it? Rabbit Chinders with three, Cauldron adds three, that's six. Ozolith adds another six, so we, we get a 12 12 Ravager Ballista if we find land. Actually, do we kill them with Ink Moth? That becomes six, that adds three, so we'd have nine. We'd have nine Infect Pings? Dang. Okay. Not convinced so far. Well, yeah, um, I, I also have to do more testing to make a verdict at land. Safekeeping. So we still do the thing though, but we're gonna have to kill some of the opponent's stuff. Because we have, I think we get 9 and not 10 infect pings here, which is quite unfortunate. Probably enough though to make us survive, at least. But we'd have to like lightning bolt or something. It has 10 power, but we can't attack, unfortunately. <laughs> it's not a working ballista, but we have to clear the board, make it so they have no more flying power, I guess. Or not no more, but not not as much. But spell into lightning bolt still kills us. Still a pretty sick turn, honestly, just casting a two mana card. Almost Plague Wind for two mana. Alright, you have two cards. Spell into Lightning Bolt means... Well, you all have to discard a spell, but they they miss, they only have uh, non-lands in hand. So these would both grow for four damage in the air, and then they could kill us with a bolt. Let's see if they have it, but they're pausing.
Okay, Blood Moon's annoying, but like not game winning. I don't know about Blood Moon against Scales. It can be good, but it's not like lights out or anything. Okay. Still, Mana Screwed, what is this? Like, I played 24 lands and I'm never finding more than 3. That's kind of annoying. Mm. Do that now, I think. Just eat the walker for now. You can eat the Ozolith, but that doesn't really do much. Can't cast the safekeeping, unfortunately. So we just pass. They needed to play the Blood Moon, I guess, not to die to the Ink Moths. If they have Unholy Heat, we can just sack the Ozolith. To save the Ravager. If they have two, it's annoying because if all that happens, we would only get three pings. Which need explosives. It's pretty good. Sadly, I can't cast my safekeeping. Like, uh, this mana screw situation is annoying. At least they're gonna kill their own stuff. Okay, forest for the safekeeping. Come on. Uh, so annoying. Well, I guess we make them crack the thing. I guess we can eat one of your creatures. Can we get 15 actually? I think we do. Because, no, but we, if we sacrifice the cauldron, we can't ping anymore. So we get 12. If we sack the Ozolith, is that worth it? To, to put them. Maybe we should have just played this as a bait. Like they would either have to crack it in response or we kill them. Anyway, the things as they are. Yeah, I think we don't need this Ozolith anymore. Just put them to three. They and then play the patchwork, which means any artifact means they die. Yeah, but in retrospect, I should have cast the patchwork. I thought like it's also gonna die to the explosives, but it would give us enough fuel that if the scenario happens, they're dead. Also, if we had just one more land, we could have activated the ballista at a counter ability. I don't know why I get mana screwed every time I. Like, I used to play 22 lands, then I added a 23rd mana screw every, every time for the first leagues. Then I added a 24th land, same thing, same deal. <laughs> Unholy heat. Okay. So, walking ballista from the top. Please. Or uh, basically any creature is good. Now we're gonna find lands, right? I knew it. Now there's a fourth land that would have won us the game. Ah, my luck. Just my luck. Probably like five lands on top of the library now. Ah. Alright. Uh, we're dead. 
needed like relic here. After stern scolding anyway, I, that was really painful. But yeah, that's how it happened. Take both these out and put in. I mean, they do have the explosives. Does it mean we want? Wait, did I take out hardened scales? I, we drew two anyway. I obviously wanted to take out the stirrings. Well, the blindness here. Might could take out the blood moon if we find green mana at least. So maybe just put that in. But, uh, I got to the toilet really quick. Be, be right back. Uh, hey, any other changes? I think we're fine. Like, the way these games have been going, seems totally doable. If we have just a smooth curve one time. This one I'll keep. Probably gonna get mana flooded this time. <laughs> but Cauldron Ballista is always sick to see we have four lands, including a saga, so maybe we just make some constructs. It doesn't have that much value in the in the dress down matchup, but I think we try to sneak one construct in. Of course, if they have turn three blood moon, we don't do that. No, on the play we do. Let's play the U.S. saga turn two. Steam vents. Untapped Chandler. I think I will just ballista that. that. I knew it. That card is so good that anytime I have a chance to take it off the field, I just do. And we do have the cauldron. Um, obviously, you could say just play through it, but I'll do this. And you think the bands are gonna affect Gale's matchups? Well, I mean, the matchups are the matchups. They're still the same as before, but some decks just are gone. Like Cascade Beanstalk, which was one of my most hated decks ever. So that's a good thing. And Scam Kanda is also dead. <laughs> I knew it, but we have lots of sagas. So let's see if they just jam the Blood Moon or not. So generally, I think this, that uh, I love the, the new bannings. Could have resolved the cauldron here, but let's make a construct. Of course, it's not the greatest against. Okay, no blood moon against press down. But it's possible we sneak a plus one counter on the construct and then it doesn't die to dress down and then it's still. It's gonna be big afterwards again. Uh, long story short, I love the bannings and glad beanstalk is gone and. I liked playing against Scam. Generally, it's actually a good matchup for us. But everybody hates the deck, so it's probably generally a good thing it's gone. Make Modern more fun, on average. But we'll see. Maybe it's gonna bring back more degenerate combo decks or something. Actually, no. Combo was good against um, Beanstalk. People, brought, people busted out the old Ad nauseum and stuff. Uh, Alpine Moon with the saga in hand is annoying. 
Like, obviously, we're gonna draw the second one, right, if they have the Alpine Moon, but they have probably, in total, like, four moons in the deck, so... Things happen, maybe we find Haywire Might. At least we get to resolve Cauldron, I don't think they have Force of Negation. And then we can keep up the mana and try to save Construct from a... Dress down if we really want to. But yeah, let's just resolve the Cauldron while we can, I think. Opponent didn't attack, that's gonna be good for us. We get in with the Construct. Opponent discarded a Merktide Regent, funny. And we can also activate this and start putting counters on the constructs, which makes them resist the dress downs. So now we are sorta what are we doing here? Are we racing or are we chilling? Okay, interesting. Mm, give me that. Here comes the dress down, I guess. Tight binder, okay, that's annoying. But maybe we can get it off the battlefield somehow. Okay. Welding jar. To play Walker for zero or uh, for one or for two. I think only for one, because then we have mana up to do stuff. You get your loot on opponent. Still no delirium that is kind of funny. Yeah, I'm not so sure about this game. For now we are ahead, but there's many things they can have. Or are we ahead? At least in the race we are ahead and we have 5-5. Five, five. If they dress down, I'm definitely trying to use Sabas. Oh no, I can't now. I don't have red mana and all the text is gone from Soul Cauldron. So, if it still had text, I could do Destroy Sabas, put a counter on a token, save it from the Getting dressed set down. Here we have Murky Boy. As a 4-4. Four, four. Interesting. Nice Delirium deck opponent. Any attacks? Didn't think so. I mean, why not attack with Shredder? You're never blocking with it anyway. Another Hang Boy. I think you want to cast that pre-combat to make the construct bigger. What's a good word for that? Make it bigger. Enlarge it. Let's see if they have counter magic. Probably do, but you never know. Okay, that's a, a lot better than dress down. Considering dress down, I actually should attack first, honestly. Because then either they play it, and we can resolve our thing, and they can't do so that take care of both of them. The jump blocks are starting. Once a coward, though, why is Ledger Shredder never attacking? I don't have, I mean, I can have an ink mod, but... You're not gonna win by not attacking, I think. Uh, two cards, you need something. 
Oh no, cast into the fire, are you kidding me? Exile an artifact, yep. No response to that. Why does everything exile even in red? I'm mad about that fact. Right now we need something, I guess. But at least the clock isn't that fast. Like, I'm like, yo, blue, red, the welding char is good, and then they have a red card that exiles an artifact. Are you kidding me? I'm just gonna crack that. Oh, that grows the Mugtide. Obviously, totally didn't consider that, but that's that's fine, I guess. Okay, Ballista means me, we might unlock the Cauldron. Could attack with Walker just to try to make some blo some flyers. Mm. Mm, God, I'm not gonna, maybe next turn. For now, I'll put a counter on it. At least this matchup is always tight. Like, the games are... Most of the time, it's gonna be at, at game 5, uh, game 3 tight match, which is kind of cool. Alright, down to 10. They have two cards. If it's not dress down or counter magic, we can be good, otherwise we probably lose. But we're gonna give it our best shot. Cool. Eyes closed. Come to spell. That is annoying. Now we attack with Walker. Either you take three, or you give me some blockers. I guess that dies too. No blocks plus destroys a bath, but what can you do, right? We even have the welding char, I guess. No, I well, you would get tapped, so yeah. Dead to no blocks plus removal spell. But at this stage of the game, we gotta make some winning plays, right? This game, the opponent's draw was just too good. Like, they really had an answer to everything we did. Sometimes... Okay, Blood Moon... That's not really that. Sometimes you get dumpstered by a deck like this, and there's not really much you can do about it. Okay. Now they're in a tough spot though. Like either they block this and give us flyers or they don't. Okay. I actually think the tight band attack was a good idea. Would have been a good idea because if we block, we grow the walker, but then it doesn't die to getting blocked by Shredder. Ballista? Okay, obviously not. Actually now we can Sabas kill Walker. That's the thing we can do. And the point is it too. I actually think we're winning now. They gave us the red mana. We found it too, but... Um, so, does it mean we, we don't attack, right? Then we can make five Thopters. Because we lose two engineered explosives, but what can you do? Lock some stuff. Yeah, now we don't attack because we can do double Sabas activation, which means we can stack it in a way that first Sabas dies and then Walker dies. Make five Thopters. What a tight game, dude. Deadline loses to another 
passed into the fire. So let's think if two, if fourth up does can we so let's see how they attack. Okay, unholy heat. Now we have to make a move. So we make five thopters. Actually, we could just regenerate. But hmm. yeah, actually, let's regenerate first because I kind of want to be cast into the fire. Didn't need to do that yet, but it doesn't really matter. Uh, regenerate that. I want to I wanna make them attack first and then make my thopters. And if we see what the last card is, it gets a little bit easier. Because if I kill my Zobaz and then they have cast into f the fire for Hanger Bag Walker, we have a problem. This is the tightest game ever. It, it depends what last card is, I think. If it's nothing, we win. If it's a removal spell, we probably don't. Anyway, we beat single removal card in the hand. Maybe by them timing out. <laughs> wow, end of combat step. Okay. So... We can go for five Thopters and kill you, but that loses to any removal card. Or make four Thopters attack with all. They can they have... Well, this doesn't block flyers. So four Thopters is actually already lethal, and if they have a removal spell, we can still sub us onto one of the unblocked ones. So I think we definitely make the four. So make four Thopters. Attack with four Thopters. At least one of them, well, cast into the fire on two would be insane. We can put a counter on one, but if they do it before blocks, we still die. So do we... So anyway, we beat that, because it can also deal one damage to two creatures. <laughs> I think we have to do it, because they can just find out. So I think we lose to specifically cast into the fire if they sequence it well, and we beat most other stuff. Look at the look at the clocks too, like what a match. Good first match back. At that point we could try to stall it out even, but I don't really prefer that as a win condition, even though it is one. It does look kinda tight though now on the opponent's clock. One says cheat cheat. Okay. Is this the um, I'm gonna win Chi Chi's or is this the, is this the <laughs> you got me Chi Chi's? Alt in hand, don't think there was a way. Yeah, I'm not sure. Bolt barely doesn't do it. Wait for insane match. Holy shit! I thought I was a two actually. Was I? A, was I a two at one point? Or am I crazy? One should I attacked more with the ledger shredder when they could.
drum, stirrings, could have cast it. Okay, well, yeah, I think um, opponent should have been less of a coward and they could have had it. <laughs> All right, that was awesome. See you round two. All right, welcome back. We are on the draw with the old only with the saga draw. I'm gonna put that back. Yes, we have drum, but not even a creature we can play. There's only the only one drops out of buzzes. Drum mostly as a oh my god, dude, what is this? I played 24 lands. And I get mana screwed every time? How? I, I still can't keep that. If I had a green source, okay, sure, but... <laughs> what is this arrow? Since when is there this little... Yo, you can put the... <laughs> you can put the okay box out now. Alright, uh, I guess we keep that. Holy shit! Three one-landers in a row? Are you absolutely kidding me? That would be an insane seven. I'm kinda mad. But we keep the classics, I guess. Mm. Island. Any more folk, more folk enjoyers? Glimmer Wasp. Well, let's play the scales because worst case we go Stirrings Wasp next turn. Uh. Gems don't mind. That must mean, okay, so it is ad nauseum. I, I put that word into my mouth earlier. And we found the ad nauseum player. For those who don't know, ad nauseum is a five mana card. <laughs> okay. That is, and it's a saga. Ad nauseum is a five mana card that says you can put the top card of your library into your hand and lose life equal to its mana value. And then you can do that again as many times as you want. And the goal is to play a card where you can't lose the game for a turn, then draw your whole deck and then win. With like Thassa's Oracle. Here they play it as a scry card. Oh, it's already happening? Well, spoils of the world. Wow, turn two in uh, turn three. <laughs> it's a turn three kill. Okay, so if anybody is confused what the hell just happened, spoils of the world says you name any card. I hope they named you already dead. Uh, yep, opponent named you are already dead for Spoils of the Vault, which is not in their deck. Then they reveal from the top of the library until they find that card. So basically the whole deck got exiled. And we can look at it. That is, um, that is quite, the th quite the thing that just happened. Let's take a screenshot for reference. Otavara. For Oracle's P Pact of Negation. Two packs. I guess Preordain made stack better. They used to play, well, they still play Slide of Hand, but they used to play Serum Visions, now Preordain. Talisman, Profane Tutor. Yeah, pretty classic. It's actually more geared towards Spoils of the Vault, I guess. There's only one at Nauseam, but there's two doors. Grim Tutor. Alright, anyway, we should be sideboarding. The, the clock's already running. Um, so what actually do we have against this? Where's my screenshot? I guess against the two doors we can bring in the Chalos, because it's a suspend card. And then you can't do that. Rexian Unlife, we can kill with Nature's Claim. We can take out most of the slower cards. I think if I play 23 lands, I get mana screwed less than with 24. This member doesn't really do anything. Relic Needle, not really, right? Can't name the mana cards. Could also play the force just to um, kill the mana rocks and Phyrexian unlifts for zero mana. Alright, let's do it this way. Okay, find your keepable hand. Even with the scales. Sideboard card. I'll keep the char in hand just in case we find the patch. I think there's one left in the deck. And I'll wait with the trailer until they suspend, I think. Oh, we just got turn 3 with the perfect draw. Mm. 
combo decks like this are always our hardest matchups because obviously we don't run much interaction. We don't have any thought seizes or counter cards. You could okay, there's a profane two turn. I think we might wanna wait another turn with the trailer so we catch them off guard and then they can't cast this if they don't have a removal card. And we have the welding char too. Like, if they suspend this, they probably don't kill us next turn, and I don't think it's even possible without acceleration. Um, so we have a suspended card, which you cast from exile without paying its mana cost. But Jailer doesn't let you do that. They could, of course, Pact of Negation it will not really they die on upkeep then. Oh, there's another one. Now that is awesome. Hopefully they don't have... Okay, let's play the Chaff first, because they could have the Pact of Slaughter Pact. Okay. Um, we need to win quickly, as, as quickly as possible. So uptick that, attack for three. Mm. Yeah, upticking is better though. So now... The suspended card doesn't get cast, and we are very happy. Ha, huh, got him. Opponent says question mark. Oh, I said sub. <laughs> I always type sub in the chat, and some gamers don't know what it means. <laughs> type question mark. <laughs> that is understandable. You're not as much on the internet, or so. maybe not a native speaker. Well, I'm neither am I, but. Ah, okay, end step, uptick. Any point in making Thopters? Not really. Can we deal 14 somehow? I think we need something else to deal 14. Like a Ravager, okay. Now we can kill in many different ways. So, what's the least amount of cards we have to give up to kill them? Uh, probably just have to sacrifice the Ravager himself. If we sack this above, we put 5 counters somewhere, but it's only an attack for 11. Like. Uh, they probably don't have any removal spells, but they could, so I'm just trying not to lose to something. Uh, let's uptick that. Sacrifice him. Sacrifice a few. Don't need a lot. And then sack the Ravager. And attack with both. This is a, a zero 4 but it's not a defender. Yeah, we beat removal spell here too. They can Angel's Grace, I guess, to not die. Fracture. Um, just destroy? Okay, sure, it has modular. That's why I attacked with both. Okay, nice. They, did, they didn't have any of the you don't lose the game cards, I guess. They kept the hand based on the two doors. So, actually, the trailer did some heavy lifting here. That's sick. Void Mirror would have worked too, but Void Mirror doesn't attack, so for that matter, we're happy. Gems and Kvans over another one of these, I guess. Dismember. I could play the Haywire Knight, I guess. Can kill their mana rocks for whatever that's worth. The Shattered Spire is a bit slow, especially on the draw. Does Cage do anything? I think no. I haven't seen any sideboard cards, but we have lots of artifact enchantment removal anyway. Uh, Needle, I think, also doesn't do anything. 
Dude, Sonya's Chainer was, was actually epic here. And we beat that... What was it? Fracture? Is that what the card's called? I usually don't really look at card names. Yeah. Throw an artifact enchantment or planeswalker. Interesting choice of sideboard option. Okay, wow, I keep every hand. A little bit heavy on the... Well, we don't have any creatures, but it's a keep, I think. Knowing me... Essex would be worse than this. <laughs> <laughs> Old school sleight of hand. Old MTG had such cool artworks, they don't really quote unquote allow these anymore. Like they want artworks to be hom sort of homogenized these days to look similar in style to each other. But we don't have any defense, so except for those. First of all, we can catch them off guard if they go on the Phyrexian Unlife plan. Where's my screenshot again? Damn it, I lost it. Oh no. Um, Phyrexian Unlife is a 3 mana enchantment which says you don't lose the game for having 0 or less life. But if damage is dealt to you when you have 0 or less life, it, it counts as infect damage. So, in many situations <laughs> it's just a gain 10 life, but in this deck it lets you win the game. That being said, we're just setting up some crap here. Hopefully finding some win conditions soon enough. Okay, they're spoiling themselves. Let's see if they die. You, you can die with this shot, <laughs> but probably don't. Nine damage to find Basil's Oracle. Are we dead already? Might as well be. Actually, I don't think you can win off three mana. And no board. Talisman of progress. Don't think forcing that is really amazing. Like, I kinda wanna use my stirrings to find something, but on the other hand, I could die then. So we die to Thassa's Oracle and thing. I feel like we can't really stirrings here. Can try to win with um to disrupt them with Bosechu when they go for the Rexian Unlife kill. But if they have the other the Angel's Grace kill. I mean, we could kill the Talisman with Force of Vigor, does that do anything? I think we play the both Sejo and plan to make a Construct for the pressure. Question is, do we force this Talisman, like, upkeep or something, but in that case they can already play the Angel's Grace so on it, so... I think we should already have done that, maybe. Long story short, this draw is not good and we're probably dead. Again, these combo decks are pretty rough matchups anyway. Perfect music for this situation. But I think we just have to hope they go on the Phyrexian Unlife plan and beat that. Man, where's my screen draw that? Uh, I lost it. Is there a history here somewhere? No. Man, I, I thought I thought it would still Oh no. Okay, whatever. Yeah, I don't think forcing the talisman does anything, but we'll see. Yeah, they're doing the thing again that happened in game one. We don't have an out to that either way. If it was unlife, we could kill it in response, but... <clears throat> I am already dead. At least it was quick and painless. See you all round three.
All right, gamers, welcome back to match three against Kovu. We get to be on the play. Amazing. Uh, two Tsubazis and uh, two Woods of Sagas, technically. Let's, should we try this? See, find out if <clears throat> Deeps is good. Let's do it. We basically only have one thing to play. <laughs> well, why well, good electric fun to you, two opponent. <clears throat> they marked to six. Probably should have done that too, but it's for science. We need to find out if, if the echoing deeps is any good. I'm gonna go with forest because I might draw a green card, but still wanna deploy the what's the saga turn two, especially with the deeps in hand. Wanna play it early. But also get value off of it, so not play it turn one. I right, flooded strand gaming over there. That's probably not a good sign. Okay. Oh, that 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 always happens. So now I'm actually sort of punished because if I had Ink Moth out, I could play the Subas and move Contest onto Ink Moth or whatever. So we just keep it in hand, do nothing. So flooded strength can mean a lot of things. Here's hoping it's just like Murktide and not. Solitude, Leyland Binding, let's see on the fetch, probably a Triome. A Ketria Triome. Augrin Triome. And usually means it's a control deck. Blue white control with lots of annoying white exile based removal cards. And the one ring to draw cards. And Godless Shrine, spicy. But maybe making lots of constructs is gonna be good here. Look, we're already getting them to 17. I'm not saying that's progress, but it kind of is progress. What does Godless Shrine mean? Also, what does pausing in beginning of combat mean, opponent? This does it mean you go AFK and do you ring my turn? My brother in Christ, you play the control deck. Watery Grave. Interesting assortment of lens over there. This match is already going gleefully slow. Why are you always posing so much opponent? Hardened skills. I think we get an Ozolith. This smells like control deck where Ozolith is insane. Then we can play second to Buzz if we want to. Or just play Deep Stepped as, as an Otsu Saga. But also resolve uh, scales. Uh. And I'm gonna try to get a scales down. I don't think it's a counter spell deck anyway, but they don't have double blue right now. With this sequencing, we can cast our spells next turn and then make more saga tokens the two turns after that. Or we could even try to go for some sort of kill next turn. Mm, not sure. Maybe with the with Ravager. Why is this so slow? I mean, it could always be that your opponent is new to the interface and takes them some time to do the game actions, but it's very... Oh, okay. Graveyard deck. Pro 2, then discard. Unless there are five mana values in a graveyard. We have Atraxer. Bro, moment. Wait. Atraxer in graveyard. But no reanimation. Yo, Nanka. Thank you so much for the sub. Welcome to the stream, by the way. 
That is very much appreciated. Alrighty then. Opponent did not get an Atraxa back, but it's looming there in the graveyard. So we want to kill them before that hits the battlefield, but at least we can always try to destroy a card that gets blocked by it so they don't gain the lifelink. With all that being said, what do we do here? We probably have some interaction in hand. Thank you for the great content. That is so nice to hear. I'm glad you like it. Like, we could definitely go for a kill here. The question is, do we have to we just play the Ballista and attack and see what they do? I think that's a good line. Playing the card before combat adds more damage to the constructs. And I don't really want to play seconds about because oh solitude evoked interesting another truck so exiled sure do they have some sort of ephemerate in any guns probably if they do it in response to the ballista that would be pretty fucking annoying um yeah let's do this I guess. No ephemeration yet, but they can now do it onto the kill the construct that we put a counter onto. This is a scary deck then, it's more a combo deck than anything. Well let's see. Yeah, that is ephemerate. Sadly, we can't do anything about that. It means to get to kill two things. The ballista still resolves, so that's something. The modeler doesn't do anything, this doesn't do anything, this doesn't do anything. Now we have to hope they don't have more removal because we can make Ballista 4-4, four, four, kill the Solitude and attack. Okay, that happens, it's good. Zing. And zing. Not another ephemerate, so the upkeep thing will fizzle. What's in your hand? There's no reanimation cards and no more removal. What else is this deck gonna play? Like more looting spells? Ah, down to 10. Not that, but also um, not the healthiest gamer ever. I'm at 23. Wait, did I gain? Oh, I, I gained life from exiling the construct, but not the Zabaz. Right. Do you have unburial rights? I think we can beat that. Shadow Prophecy, okay. And Persist, I think we also beat just by. Um, well, they go to 8 and then we kill them. Not even a forest to be seen anywhere in the mana base. So they look at four. Take two in hand. Leyland Binding. Palantir of Orthanc goes to the graveyard. Gorios Vengeance. Okay, that is actually scary because they can gain the life then, but we might still be able to beat them. We'll see. Hopefully they don't find any solitudes here because then we probably don't. It's ten cards, so... Ah, there's the solitude. Just gotta hope no white card in hand, but no, you can't take solitude and ley land binding. Alright, scary stuff. Maybe we can get the infect kill though, but no, not against solitude in hand. This is good, get exiled at least. 
Yeah, but there's another track, sir. Well, they can take a track, sir, plus solitude at least. Glorious Vengeance was scary here. Also, them finding Solitude. Uh, what did they take? Solitude, Leila Manning, Ottavara, and another Glorious Vengeance. Okay, yep. Yeah. Well, no blocks. Reef. Okay. Exciting Grizzle brand. Don't you want to reanimate that, perhaps? Well, I have one spell. That's pretty annoying that you can take that away. Any top deckers? Nope. I'm always either getting mana flooded or mana screwed. There is no, there is no middle ground. And I'm gonna make another what's this saga here. They have these cards plus one unknown, so they can what get the grief back. Only knows my hand, so no need to like do any bluff shenanigans. Scary deck. We play against lots of combo decks now. So is the new format better than the old one? Well, I don't know. There's always decks you have bad matchups against, so... Any Solitudas? I think you shouldn't. Yeah, you're not dead and then you can cast it and keep the Leyland Binding too. I mean, not trying to tell you how to play your deck opponent, but... <laughs> Shadow Prophecy, okay, and then I find another Atraxa and then the loop continues. It's pretty sick. It's well it's looking at four, so not guaranteed by any means. There is a grizzle brand though. But I guess you can gain seven and then uh, maybe we should not have tagged, then we could do some block plus ping, but they have the solitude, so not like, yeah, attacking was the right move. But I think we're dead here. They can gain 7, then lose 7, and draw 7, and like... Probably have enough interaction not to die. But... It's, it's a, oh! Ephemerate, so... It doesn't get exiled in the end step. That's kind of cool. That is kind of cool, opponent. And we somehow make a 7-7 seven, seven Ballista. They still have the Solitude, though. I think we have to hope to stall it out and then win next turn, but it's like so unlikely because they draw so many cards. Okay, already played Lind. Not really any point attacking. 
And you can now play Solitude, Upkeep, and Ephemerate it, and to that, I think. I mean, we can ping it, I guess. Still probably losing to that, or if we're not dead anyway already. Oh, they, they didn't do that. Maybe this deck is the new hotness. Um, black white this game is apparently not good enough. At least the gamers always say that. Let's see if they let me block. Because I can deny the lifelink by pinging it. Let's see if the opponent sees the line, looks like they do, evokes it even. Uh, I think we try to kill the Solitude, but if they ephemerate it doesn't really matter though. So maybe we just save the counters. But the long story short is that they are gonna gain a 7 life and then can draw so many cards that I don't think we can do anything, really. Since the evokes probably have Ephemerate too, another one. We already played two, but... Oh. Opponent did see my plan. So, smart opponent. Uh, uh, I guess we played out, but we're just, we're just so dying here, it's not even funny. There's always a small chance we somehow can get him next turn. But they can draw it. They can draw 14 cards. And they, they, the removal is just so good. Seen all these. Well, I, I have no, I have no stuff. <laughs> I think you know that. But they would have to discard otherwise. What are the odds? There's no, no solitudes, no Leyland bindings in the hand. I mean, you can throw a few of them. Oh, the Inkmoth's gone now, though. So actually, no win condition left. Maybe Cauldron, but would still require them having zero things. No Cauldron, but Ravager. So you're saying there's a chance. I said no, not the solitude. Okay. I hate these white removal cards, they're so annoying. So we've been through all the four, all four of the solitudes. Ephemerate, <laughs> oh my god. I mean, of course they do, they just draw so many cards. That means we don't get any doctors and then we're actually straight up dead. Okay, we tried so hard and didn't actually get that far. <laughs> uh, cage against the Oreos Vengeance, Relic. Governing cards can't enter that too. Safe keeping against the removal. Something like those out. Charo also doesn't do anything. We need any claims. Don't know what they could have in the sideboard.
But we had the cave on two. Neil. Oh. I don't know. We gotta win this game and then maybe play some card against the sideboard cards. Okay, that's not, that works for me. Aldrin is some graveyard hate with scales, with a ballista and the patriarch, some some of the cards ever. Annoying though how this combo deck has like eight eight to one or zero mana exile based removal spells. <laughs> like insane. Like we can't just assume they don't remove our stuff. But that's just how it is. We do have SF keeping though. We, we kind of need to draw a land or two. But it, I always either get man screwed or flooded. It's, there's no there's no clean curve. It, it, it's not. It doesn't exist. <laughs> it just doesn't. I, Rockerin Rioma. Oh, so you're saying there's a chance? Why are we waiting? <laughs> this is gonna be a pretty fast kill actually. Make it a five five seven seven. Oh, never mind. Skin's gone. But I guess we could have brought in some removal for these. Possibly also kill other stuff. And play that because it has the uptick ability. What are all these pauses always? Are you like? What you're gonna solitude the the patchwork? Ah. <sighs> I don't understand these pauses. Are you with me? I mean, come on, that's so annoying. The Martian Flint. Planes. Fable. You know what? I miss my hardened scales. I miss it dearly. Every day. Every day I'm scaling. Sagar is a draw. Okay. No, I actually can't complain about the land count this time. Crazy, you know. Come on. Can't you just. I don't understand these pauses, it's it's so weird. Like do, do, does the opponent always walk away from the computer after after they pass the turn or something? I could have played the ballista for zero to push more damage, but I think I'll chill on it for a bit. Actually cast it next turn. It's a pretty good fable of the Mirror Breaker deck. Also, psychic damage and it is working. <laughs> yeah, but it is, is it actually just gonna make me mad and play to win even harder, you know? Well, like who said it's a good idea to make me mad? Do we wanna block this? And uptick. Mm, Alright, give me that.
Here comes the tinted indulgence, okay. What did that do? Right, we might have them dead here. With safekeeping available too. A ravager. Conscious concedes. Why would you concede? I mean, yes, I'm ahead, but uh, you're not dead. I mean, you are dead, but you didn't see my cards yet. I don't know. People concede at the weirdest times. We might want some of these. Because we can at least kill Leyla Binding and Moa possibly. Bring these in. On the play the Patrick's aren't terrible though. Take out one of these for the might, I guess. But I really gotta piss be right back. Oh. All right, gamers, can we beat the graveyard deck? I don't know. You tell me. Maybe they just had no answer to the soul cauldron and were like, I, I can't beat that card on the battlefield. But I mean, they have Leyland Binding, so... It would generally be like an okay hand, but it's not great and doesn't even win fast enough against this deck. And also, okay, we have some hate. So that's good. Keep that, keep that. I guess we ship this. Yeah, well, that sounds pretty good to me. Needs, of course, some help to win, but got most of what we want. Oh no, we're getting briefly formulated. This game is back on the menu, boys. Maybe we should have... No, this member doesn't even beat that. But maybe this is the best grief deck now. After the Fury is, is gone. Like people say, grief, grief ephemerate isn't as good as grief. You're not dead after all, because you don't detect turn two for four and then so on. But on the other hand, um, <laughs> we're gonna get this. We're gonna get this. Why is it the, not the next card? Anyway, uh, you don't have. A, my point is, you don't have as fast as a, as, a, as fast of a clock. But solve that problem by jamming reanimator trucks and grizzle brand into your deck and you got yourself a you're cooking. <laughs> uh, that was way too convolutedly explained, but I think you get the idea. <laughs> sure. 
sure thing. Oh, fun. Wouldn't it have been what's the saga? I mean, come on. <clears throat> ah, I should have played this. So they actually, oh, but they still cast the ephemerate. Do you have to cast it? No. Like, now they can't attack. And I showed them what I drew, so I shouldn't have played this land. I think. So they would do that, but they did it anyway for some reason. The game was winnable if we would have drawn only gas. But we drew only mana sources after they stripped us down to zero things. So every turn that passes the chances are getting lower. Solitude in the graveyard well. Wow. Oh there. Like if we found another saga and then you need explosives, well okay. What a game, huh? Magic the Gathering is one of the games ever. It's a saga could still be good here. But <laughs> uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna go here. <laughs> That's fine. Uh, two combo decks in a row and those are probably the hardest matchups. Followed by ring omanath decks and then everything else is is very beatable. Alright, see you in match 4. Yo, match 4 on the draw versus famous Mono Red, Midrange Grinder, M. Hayashi. Let's go. It's a cool matchup, but it's also surprisingly hard. The deck, I mean, I just assume they play that, they always play that. And they trophy a lot with it. Um, not here, I guess. It's it's very grindy, like it turtles around, always has something to do, and it has lots of fields to annoy us, um, annoy our sagas. Oh my god, the no green draw. That sucks. Okay, do we gemstone? I think we kind of have to. Would be a good seven, I guess. Hmm. Well, this would be a pretty good seven. And one field of ruin is interesting. And one Petrox is kind of nice, gotta say. Oh, it's green. Human token. Okay, spicy stuff is happening. Let's go. Huh. Thought sees bug where you put the card to the bottom and then you redraw it. Hey, is this the Stompy deck or? At least it's also a field deck. Hayashi always plays those. It's like their signature. I follow them on Twitter and they always post that mono red mid range deck. Maybe it's cruel. <laughs> so, what is that? It's a 3 mana 5 5 that can't attack unless you have a 1 1 out. Well, I'm not too scared of 5 5 so honestly, but we'll see. For now, it's good on the board. Okay, uh, we keep deploying patchworks. Magic always. Very low on resources though, which isn't good. Mm -hmm. If this attacks, I'm not attempting to double block it because 
That would re be really bad for the opponent, actually. Oh, forest. Right, we have a good board, but we have nothing else. Dismember. Okay. That's fine, I guess. We still get to Ozolith a lot. Fastest block I've ever seen. Well, I love playing against green. Green doesn't have exile cards. Even red has them nowadays. Wait, Ballista on top. Opponent has some shenanigans with big mana or whatever. I want the Ballista. Can I have one too? Corsa is sick. Warping Whale. Exile creature with... Power or toughness, one or less. Best choice is probably. No, I wish I also lived onto the other Patrick, honestly. You can make two counters. Uh, if I had an artifact land, it would be so good. I think the best choice is to attack to his own ability. But then this only becomes 4-4, four, four, which is like not great. Could sack this patchwork. It's probably better though. Because then it counters the warping whale. Ah, oh my god, these draws today. Any jumper blockers? Man. Just so many times we're sitting there with nothing to do. It's painful to me. And they have a ballista in hand, we know that. Six mana, ballista for three. And Shattered Spire is actually not bad. Okay. I don't understand people's concessions. Like, yes, I'm ahead, but you're not dead, you have stuff. Maybe you also have only lands in hand, but I don't know. Just never a fan of those. Okay, what is mono green? Is it? I don't know, really know what they're doing. Is there a, a deck list? Can you search for players here? Is it something you shouldn't do? Okay, this is like not even. <laughs> I think we just play like we just play however we feel. We could play the dismembers. We could play the safekeepings, the claims, the might. Not really sure what to expect. We've seen basically some stompiness. Welding char <laughs> could do some stuff. I think we bring in the might as answers to some problematic stuff. Don't like board a lot. This member can be good, but I like our like I like all our cards basically. We can 
green we cannot overpower usually just by big, going big so we just have to not lose to any problematic I don't even know can the great creator maybe right, let's just do it this way uh, bring in the second k ones I think over is it, is it gonna be a Khan deck like that I'm, I'm not sure we'll see more of the deck now Gangnam style great card to draw while flooding yeah that's why I love it when the when the game gets grindy the shattered spire is great there's lots of gamers who cut it from the deck because the deck is just ultra tight especially with 24 lands but it, it, it's, that's exactly when you want yeah some mana sinks there's players who play like Shadow Spear in the main deck and and Haywire Might and and animation module, which I'd love to, but uh, these draws today, oh my god! Right, another March six gemstone K ones keep. No creatures, but I guess we have a Nexus. I think we have to exile one of the engine pieces and bottom or bottom it instead of exiling it. Hard to say. I guess this one on the draw, but depends how the game goes. Still put that in. Always rough mulling and then having the K ones, but it's still kind of nice to have. Glimmer of Asp. Let's stir. I take a note to Saga. Okay, no land war. But Ravager and Walker are both sick. I'll take a Walker. Get some counters going. Right, what's the saga on top of the deck? Actually, it's not great against this deck because they have so many fields. Even though they have to pay three mana, but effectively two to do the thing. He's my tome in modern, huh? I like my opponent's style. They're just trying out some stuff now. Uh, I'll play that on the red side because if we get fielded, we get a green source anyway. Okay. Opponent has card draw, but hardened scales in the long run also accumulates lots of value. Mm. What does Sunken Citadel say? You choose a color and it enters tapped. You get so you get to choose one color, basically it's tapped and that you can play in any color. And you can make two mana for land sources, which means you only have to pay effectively one to activate Field of Ruin. That's from from the latest set. It's kind of cool in these eight field decks. Okay. Yeah, so Saga is going to get fielded, but we, I'm still going to play it out. I mean, we could pay them to field us and then play it. Yeah, we don't really need our mana here. I think that's better. Cauldron means we can uptick our creatures to add counters, which is sick. But then we might actually want our mana. We can also eat the opponent's polyster though. Uh, now let's eat our walker first. Hopefully this stays on the battlefield for a bit. Okay, we get now aggro on. Actually, maybe I should have split it. Uh, let's check with this. And uptick that. Maybe they field us and then we can be like, I got him. What's the saga? We'll see. 
We're actually not far off a kill with Cauldron, Nexus and Ballista. You need five counters on the Nexus to do the thing. So maybe they're gonna see the value of building us actually. And then we get Saga value. You know they could have they have eight fields in the deck, or maybe seven. Is it current time? No, Ballista for two, okay. That's fine. I can uptick, so. Um, I should have upticked in response. But if we trade those. Hmm. Right, let's think about this. No, I think this is fine. Then we get the Ozolith counters. I'm actually trying to kill them with Nexus next turn. And for that I need my Sabas, so I'm gonna untap. I should have upticked when that was on the stack. I, I've, I messed that up. Okay. So, animate Nexus. We have two activations or two mana up. I'll take this Thopter. Then eat the Ballista. Okay, so I start with this. Newly tap the newly controlled. I think we we got him if I execute this correctly. Through the ballista. Possibly. Uh, maybe I'm wrong. We'll see. It's only two counters and I don't have any mana left. Because I, I thought it had three, but it had one power from, from its own stat line. Yeah, we can't quite win here. Because... Uh, So how do we play this? Mm. Okay. Let's trade this for the ballista. And we could save it, but then it dies to Field of Ruin, and when it dies as a land, we don't get any Ozolith action. So I think I'm okay with this. Not really, I picture this going, but it's still okay. I wish I had more mana up. Actually, I don't have six, we have ballista activations up. Alright, what you doing? Okay, coarser, not scary. Like, now you're just kind of dead to this on you. Maybe dismember. Well, aren't you just dead now to the second ink moth? Pretty sure you are. Could have force of vigor, of course. Okay. Ravager is always nice to see. 
obviously. That makes a lot of things easier. Okay, didn't even force the trigger, saga trigger activation thingy. Do we think they have Boss of Vigor? Might be a bit annoying, but can we beat that? Can just take for four in fact. I'm gonna I'm gonna do the thing. Right, any forces of bigger opponent. Otherwise, you're dead here. Don't concede here, but you concede to his patchwork. <laughs> uh, TG's Mr. Hayashi. That was definitely a favorite matchup for us, so we just didn't see much of the deck, but scariest cards could be like kind of great credo or something. But better than seeing any of the white. So, right, see you round five. On the draw again, round five against Mr. Kafuyet. Kahira, that's not good. It's not a, not combo, but control usually. This hand is fine though, I guess. You know, welding child probably not good in the Kahira matchup. This, this like, you can play this card only when your only creatures are elementals usually. So solitudes, prismatic endings, leyline bindings, all of those things. In probably, we will see. Right, let's keep all the artifact spells for after the patchwork is out. That card is the best card in the matchup. Uh, I'll take the what's the saga, I think. Yep. One of the best cards here. Castle Vantress, Chalice on one, okay. I guess you got a Chalice. Um, yeah, I'll play not Saga yet because I'm gonna want to play spells next turn and make constructs with this Saga. Also not the Char because when the other Patrick is out, it's better cast it then. Let's see if they do removal spell plus pay forward here. Okay. Yeah, now we play this. Play that. His hand's pretty good against control. So maybe we can do this. Generally, not a fan of this matchup because the removal spells are so good. Uh, we get we get this countered, but it's gonna get countered either way, and we get some some triggers. Got to love 
triggers any trigger enjoyers in this chat room. Attack for four. What you got, Mr. Kafuyet? I don't speak French. Does it mean anything? Hmm. The downside is that I just don't enjoy these matchups at all. Wait, what? Oh, they're gonna play a board wipe, I guess. Sure. Like, I just don't have fun in these matchups, I don't know why. The, the removal cards are just so good. Unfortunate that I don't have, like, an Ozolith out or anything, but... All that's been said, we still got a shot here. Um... I think we just make constructs now, as the other things later. We could do a sneaky surprise quadrant ballista thing. I mean, that's certainly just a me thing. Or, I mean, playing against control generally is never the most fun, you know. <laughs> but I used to like it, and then they printed all of those cards that are hard to play against. All that being said, we have a shot in this game for sure, because they have only three cards and no like ring or, or anything out. But they're probably gonna play one soon enough. Easy. We don't. We don't keep. Uh, we we didn't draw any one drops, which is sick. So we might just play out this boss Aju, honestly. Say okay, we're not casting one drops this game. I get an Ozolith, probably. Yeah, let's cast Cauldron. Ozolith probably better than Zabaz in this. But why did they just take it? Let's see if they have another board wipe. How many Supreme Verdict sign mod on these days? Answer at least one. Hall of Storm Giants. As long as they don't have a, a, the one ring, we can totally beat any control things they've got going on, which is always good. Oh, right. Well, goes to the graveyard, I guess. Well, that was dumb because I lost my mana for nothing. Why are we pausing on this? Taking a screenshot, I guess. <laughs> uh, my opponent is such an idiot. Yes, yes, that's me. Right, how many Leyland Bindings and Solitudes you got, opponent? There is one Solitude. Uh, we just let them block. No, okay. Uh, I think we animate the thing, because why not? For the counter two. Actually, was it nine? They go to four. Can't quite win. We could put them to at least two life. Yeah, take, take five. Problem is, if they, if they kill our two things, we sort of have to try to win with Infect and then the life doesn't matter anymore. Except if we draw more creatures, then they're pretty dead. Steam vents. Played untapped and you're dying.
like playing untapped and you're dead on board, but doesn't mean you can't like remove my stuff in response. Okay. Ah, okay, they have two cards. No, the inky boy. Oh, I, I forgot to activate the cauldron there. That was kind of bad. Let's lobby gameplay here. Let them block and then ping them down to two. Or actually, down to one. Let's do this. And that. Uh, Deny the life link too. Otherwise, the arrow. Okay, there was a bug. The arrow went to the opponent's face for a second, and I was confused because I clicked the creature. <laughs> yeah, and what you got? Another solitude. <laughs> well, that's pretty bad. Uh, yeah. Can't they just ban solitude too? I'm just gonna let this trade happen. We get some Ozolith counters and. Maybe just have to kill him with these inky boys now. They have only a card left, so... So we have to just drop the one ring. <laughs> Probably four up in the deck, though. So. Oh no. I hate prismatic ending too. Still got a win condition. That's not a card we can really. And we have another cauldron. Two. Do we want to play that? Probably. Not lethal, but it's pretty close to lethal. Also, only solitude kills lands, so that's a thing. We had one more land, I think they would be dead. Because now we can... No, we can deal at most 7, in fact, here. Yeah. For now, let's deal 4. Okay, 2 cards. Yeah, can't steal my land cards. <laughs> so we are actually... Archimedes Charm is very good against this deck for the gain control part, but in the sport position it's fine. You need Solitude, or you're dead. I think. What else could do it? Uh, 
I wish I wish they just banned Solitude and drink too. I'd be the most happy man in the Magic Universe. <laughs> oh, ice. Uh, okay. Yes. I think you're still dead. Funny how we got them to full life virtual two and now they're dying on infect. Zing. Zing. Don't think there's any way out of this. Zing. You got anything like <laughs> what could you have? Maybe they don't they're not realizing that this is also infect damage. Press down. Oh, now it doesn't have infect anymore. Right? They go to six and nine infect. Oh my god, that's that's amazing. Didn't realize that was an out, but it is. We still have three lethal cards on the battlefield, but that was good. As well, if they drop the one ring. Plus, kill my cauldron, plus wiggle out of this. Uh, so annoying, but it's possible. Even not that unlikely. There's part one of the thing that I just said. What if they have Blood Moon in the main deck? Lend would actually have been kind of good here, but nope. I think still only Solitude and I guess Fire would be very good here. Because I am attacking with two, I am animating two. If only I had another land. <sighs> Shark Typhoon. Okay, that doesn't do it though. At least not on its own. Two, if two Shark Typhoons, oh my god. Oh my god, ah, oh, they're actually wiggling out of it. Holy shit. Yep, now they just need anything for the last Inky Boy. If only we had one more land here, it's always the... Uh, uh, this is the tightest game ever, but they're gonna win. Well, I'm gonna have to concede soon enough. Well... They need another one of those effects, still. Uh, still have the chilies out, so... This is the only last chance we have now, and if they have another thing, we just concede. No, I'm not attacking the Planeswalker. <laughs> ah, instant speed verdict. Yeah, oh my god, this game... Ah, that's painful. Alrighty. That just happened. They probably have a ring, so we bring in these, I think. This is an out. This. Oh, maybe some of these. Oh, it looks good. That is a game that just happened, oh my god, they had just the perfect amount of, s of stuff to wiggle out of it. Uh. Could be force if we go to kill like Chalice of the Void, but what else does it do? Leyland bind kills Leyland Bindings. Maybe instead of the Might, but uh, whatever. That's also can get it off of Woods Saga. Mm-hmm. <laughs> 
Ich will Five Länder. Na, oh, die will ja nur zu sagen. Ah, das ist eine gute Hand. Da, die ist eh eine gute Hand. Bet if I put the land to the bottom, I'll never draw lands. So, what do we bottom here? It's good seven. Guess the Ravager. It's the least, in this matchup, the least exciting card. Hard to say. Oh my god, this game. They were nine in fact, I had three in keys, and they wiggled out of it. Is, is that, is, can we believe that? I don't want to believe that. But it is a thing that happened. Maybe I missed a counter somewhere. Just ping them dead. Always possible. Um, I'm actually gonna start making constructs, I think. Even though then this Petrox is not doing anything. Just playing out Cauldron and getting in removed is also not really the most exciting thing. But he had to dress down too. So that means the construct plan is not the best plan in the world, but it is still a plan. Still gonna stick to the plan here. It's a bit whack, but. What a song, though. There's a banger. Okay, that's just a cycle. Maybe a the opponent might have only two lands in hand if they use the ice like that. I don't know why they didn't upkeep it, though. Probably for forgot about it or something. And are you gonna be mana screwed now? Or? Scales has been exiled. Not really using it for now, so that's fine, I guess. <laughs> could needle a random fetch land. Probably not a good idea. I think this is one of the games where you just have to hope you beat them before they draw out of the mana screw. Which means Sabaz is a pick. Play that because if we draw land, we get to double spell next turn. We just cast the walk of zero to push one more damage. Uh, no, not sure. Could have done it earlier when the scales were still out. Solitude exiling Solitude, so no other white cards in hand. What is in your hand? No lands, no white cards. Interesting. Fire eyes, dress down. Ah, oh, tap land. Wow. Uh. Yeah. Unfortunately, ah, this tap land is actually really bad here. Because, okay, if they had like dressed down, we might want to sub us onto the construct. That didn't happen anyway, but. Still, sort of way too slow to beat this mana screw. Are you kidding me? I hate this card. For one mana, it's basically a leyline of the void. Oh, okay. That's a thing that we can play. What are they thinking here? Yeah. 
Wir hören Scolding. Okay, it's annoying. Can we kill them? They don't have another solitude at least, maybe. That's 9 damage, make it 10. Yeah, we go for it, definitely. Another solitude means we don't win. Everything is a haywire, mate. Okay, nice. That was good, but can only win if they a mana screwed well. They didn't find land in a lot of draws. Probably not a current deck, I would have to guess. We run 24 lands. Let's play it. I, I kinda I play 24 and then always go down to 23. Kinda weird. Maybe this is the echoing deeps matchup, so let's take out another stirrings. Uh, yeah, I don't know what else to cut. Most cards are good. Maybe the needle isn't great. I'm not sure what it does. Well, they probably have the one ring, right? We haven't seen it, but... Right. Whatever. Uh, This is a hand of cards. It's not a good one. It casts some spells. Like what we really need is Lutz Saga and Cauldron and Patchwork. Do we mulligan for those or do we just say, okay, we we do this? I'm gonna keep the seven instead of mulliganing for card quality, but this hand is not good at all. Like, let me know if you would mulligan this hand, but going to six and not having a better hand would just... It's, it's like, how likely is it that you find a six where you have one of your things you're looking for, a good mana base and other good cards too? And how likely is it that it's the same or worse? Okay, that is one of the draws ever. We want to play it now, next turn. Let's just attack. Do the old slow roll land drop, because we are the smartest gamer in the world. At least it makes feel smart. Yeah, I'm just gonna drop the fast land and the walker. Wanna, if I'm gonna get something scolded. Probably gotta be this one, or counter spell, because the walker isn't great against all the exile removal cards anyway. Trace down, that's annoying. That's two mana cryptic command against the stack and sometimes even collaterals, some constructs too. So we're actually sort of happy that maybe they have another one if they already cast that. I said as much, it's, it's a sad keep, yeah, that, that's really what it is. Oh my god. Oh my god, all our cards are underwhelming now. Are oh, you doing socks? The saddest part of this match was the first game. Mystic Gate Enjoyer over there. Playing the Season of Discovery, Malvolf Classic. Oh, that's sick. I've never played that game, but sounds sounds like you're enjoying it. Malvolf, so I got you on the second screen. Oh, nice, nice. 
I'm glad I'm worth enjoying on the second screen. I don't really... It's gonna sound weird, but I don't really play any video games. <laughs> I play these competitive games and that's it. Magic the Gathering, Super Smash Bros. Melee. I've played a lot of video games, but these days the competitive side is taking over. <laughs> Yeah, should we get a Haywire Might to get rid of the Stone of Erich, or do we just know it for the time being? We're getting dressed, dressed down here, I think, so let's try to get... Hmm. Could also just get an Ozolith. That is, at least works through this card. Uh, yeah, we can maybe get one later. can save a construct from dress down if we give up on the bars if we want to. Because counters are not abilities, they just do things on their own. Okay, so it's solitude time. Okay. That's fine. Now we get the counter anyway. Oh no, we don't get it here, but we could get it with Ozolith. Ah, it's a 3-3, so they can actually trade now. Let's see. Okay, so probably no second dress down. I kind of felt it, but... Yeah, let's play the Saga. We don't we don't have to save keeping up then. Possibly I should have just used it here, but... Not sure. Yeah, I, I forgot about the stone. Should have just... Either let the exile happen or use save keeping. Yeah. Wasted my mana. But nothing here. Just stop them. Why do I? Ah, uh, why does stuff like that happen to me? People play that now. Okay, okay. But we're doing constructs only game plan. So, yeah. Yes, that's the thing that's happening now. Maybe that's gonna be our win condition this time. Okay, that. There's no time in Stone of Erich. Cover every base except that. I'm not gonna make another one here because. They play verdicts. I think we've seen multiple supreme verdicts. Ah. Still haven't seen a wandering. Like, what is your what is your card draw? Is it only Archmage's charm? That's kind of insane, though, isn't it? I mean, it could be a budget decision, of course. <laughs> wow, everyone's a saga ever. It's kind of funny. Well, we basically have six in the deck, so... Do we just Pithing Needle the Wandering? Because we think they might have it. Like usually they do, right? Hmm. 
It's like really under the radar these days. I think we do that. Because the other options aren't that great here. And good luck stealing that with Archmage's Charm. This is probably another solitude, but at least we have safekeeping now. Nice. Uh, and you got me. Not gonna make a thing and then run into Supreme Verdict. Mm-hmm. Uh, okay, I guess I... I guess one of them survives. Uh, the clutch is plus one, plus one counter in the... wide world. I never play the, the Ballista. Because it does produce an Ozolith counter if it goes away, otherwise random 1-1 one, one that powers up the constructs. Oh wait, that's stressed down. Oh, I shouldn't have done that. Oh my god. Yeah, that was dumb. He got exiled too. Mm. So much hate for the constructs. Welding char actually would have been would be good now, but I'm kind of mad about cursed totem existing. Like at least make it null rod so the opponent can't activate their ring. It's so selectively good against creature decks. Not sure if you should use the safekeeping here, but you gotta use it at some point to save one thing, so why not right now? Am I right, gamers? <laughs> what with the saga? Let's fucking go. Got scolded. This is, this is definitely a game of Magic the Gathering. Yeah, it's happening right now. Can I find my last two Ursus Sagas, please? It's like the only cards that do anything, really. I got Harris. I mean, Construct 7 made this game 6 or something. Yeah, well, thank you for the failure. Happens to the best of us, as I always say. Down to five. Well, what four, what four cards are in hand? Memory Deluge. There's the card draw I was talking about. In response, Orkish Bowmaster, get him. Oh wait, that doesn't even draw cards. <laughs> doesn't do anything. Mm. I mean, it's close now. 
We basically need only one more hit with the construct. And we have two more to make. But I'm sure they wiggle out again like they did game one. That was insane, you guys should have seen that. Imagine the board state opponent has nine in fact. You have three ink moth nexuses. One of them has three plus one plus one counters on it. And here's a soul cauldron out. And we didn't win that because they had just the perfect number of answers. I can I can smell the dress down, but I have to do this. And unfortunately, we can't get a Sabaz and save a creature. Because there is this friggin' totem out. But we can save one with Cauldron, I guess. That's something. Check for one Infect, because we can. Any downside to doing that? Probably not. Any dress downers in chat? Any Debbie downers? I wonder if they just don't play the ring. Maybe they maybe it's a budget decision. Okay. And you're still dead, you need to evoke another solitude now. Oh no, you can block. <laughs> There's probably verdict time. I wish I still had my safekeeping, but what am I gonna do, right? Settle the wreckage. <laughs> It's always solitude. It, it's never not solitude. Scalding done. Oh, uh, not naughty fairy and no verdict. It's the dumbest game. The thing is, I have no answer to the opponent's artifact, so the construct plan is all we got, and it's gonna be over so, as soon as they find more removal spells. Four cards in hand, we'll see. <laughs> okay. The dream is alive. Oh my god. This is certainly one game of Magic the Gathering. I'm still just going for the damage, though. Actually, yeah, I'll put it here. A legendary and Construct game. I should have a counter on screen. Most constructs made in a single game. Ice. At least it's not like cast into the fire. Another Solitude. Oh, I'm in red zone on clock. What a match. No, wait, you only have four mana. Leyland Binding. Fuck, I hate Leyland Binding. It's a dumb card. Always a tough choice which kill is more realistic, the life kill or the or the infect kill. Yeah. I'm gonna have to try to make fast moves now because you know the clock. <laughs> but four minutes is, is a lot to finish this game. Either we win or we don't, you know. Don't know if goes away. Uh, maybe not. Maybe it is. I mean no, what is this? Shark Typhoon cycle cycled for one. No, does this cost three? No, two. Okay, so they overtapped. Cool. 
first totem. Are you kidding me? Why do people play that? I mean, is that an old? Is that a reprint of an old card? That's a verdict, right? No, memory deluge. Desperate. Do they have a swamp? Lila mining costs two. No, that's a Plains Island swamp. I thought it was a Plains Island mountain one. I hate these triomes. They're not. They don't display their colors very well. A hero in hand? Okay. So what is it? Not a Leland Binding? Ardent skills. And the opponent wants to win on time, probably. At five. If it's only Leland Binding, I think they're dead. If it's Leland Binding plus Solitude, they, <laughs> they keep on keep on wiggling. Solitude evoked. People who don't have Ephemerate in the deck always stack it like that. Up to 40 life. Uh, still in the attack step, let's move one more. There's a creature now in the graveyard, give me that. Uh, any Leyland bindings? <laughs> wow, we, we did it! That was so painful. Like the, the, the first and the third game were both so painful. And we only didn't time out because... Um, because the second game was so fast. Oh my god. We got the 3-2 losing to two combo decks and beating everyone else. I'll take that any day of the week, honestly. Like, that was, that's a good, really good showing for this deck. Combo decks like Ad Nauseam killed us on turn 2, or well, uh, turn 3. What are you gonna do? <laughs> and the other combo deck even was a Leyland Banding Solitude combo deck with reanimation. Anyway, we got a treasure chest. Let's go. What you, what, what you got? Eight items. Shalob. But it's actually Gishkana. Is this a hot take or um, does everybody hate these alternate art? Not, I mean, alternate name cards. I, I, fr I mean, it's cool that they exist, but what really grinds my gears is when you see a deck list online and they have those alternate cards and you're like, what the hell is that? And then you have to look and just put the normal one. <laughs> Yo, it's Shivan Dragon, though. That's sick. Temple. Okay, that was a pretty bad chest, but uh, sick league, sick league. That was painful, but also fun. Let's go. We are going to play another one on the stream, but if you're watching this on YouTube, thanks for thanks for the support, everybody, and I'll see you in the next video. Don't forget to you know like the video if you want to support me. See you next time.